गुणातीतो अक्षरम ब्रह्मा भगवान पुरुषो तमः जनो जाननिदम सत्यम मुच्यते भवबंधना श्री स्वामी नारायण भगवान की जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज की जय राधा कृष्ण देव की जय सियावर रामचंद्र भगवान की जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज की जय महंत स्वामी महाराज की जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव की जय विथ प्रोस्ट्रेशन एट द डिवाइन फीट ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण एंड माय गुरु हरे परम पूज्य प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज एंड परम पूज्य महंत स्वामी महाराज माय हार्टीएस्ट नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एंड जय स्वामी नारायण टू ऑल द सक्षम डेलीगेट्स नाइस टू बी विथ यू एंड फील प्रेवलेज्ड especially when my good friend lion friend ashish called upon me to be a part of your summit today and he asked me to talk on the principles and the core values that saksham is based on i come from one of the largest organizations in the world the baps swami narayan sanstha Have you been to Akshardham at Ahmedabad or Delhi? How many of you? Just raise your hands. About quite few of you, about 10, 15 of you. It's a sprawling 110-acre campus in Delhi. We have such 1,300 campuses in 60 countries of the world. U.S. Houston, yeah, at Stafford in Houston, at Stafford. We have got a huge campus there. So. along with that we have more than about 100 hospitals hostels schools and colleges all managed by the saints of this organization we are about 1300 saints in this organization and out of that more than about 1000 of them are graduates post graduates chartered accountants doctors and engineers our more than 150 saints are born american and british citizens our more than about 50 saints they have graduated out from stanford from yale from carnegie mellon from oxford so we are directly involved in the administration in the management in the system in the infrastructure in the hr of our organization what i'm doing now is my extra job is not my mainstream job it's my hobby to talk to people and encourage and motivate and inspire them for better living for better values in life so we know what we are talking when we are talking to professionals because we too are professionals in one or the other way because as i said we take care of all these activities we do 162 different kinds of social cultural environmental medical activities all over the world as an organization we have got a permanent seat in the united nations as an ngo only three organizations from india have so our representative every wednesday he sits in the united nations in new york so this is just a background of the organization that i'm coming from and on a personal note i have personally sat talked interacted with more than 25000 families in 25 countries of the world in the last 26 years that i am as a saint for half an hour for 45 minutes for one hour across caste creed color religion nationality so knowing much about the society about the social life of people and along with that talking to professionals being the midst of in the midst of professional professional people many things to share many things to care many things to impart as well so today when we are in the saksham leadership summit and i've been asked to talk upon the saksham principles and core values the first important aspect that i've been told and as i read in the brochure and the diary that was sent to me 
is you become saksham, you become capable, you become, you hone your skills and your abilities are strengthened, new horizons conquered. In short, you upgrade your abilities day in and day out and you become an able person. Because abilities of a person are the first requirement for growth. If you are quite able, if you are quite capable, you'll be able to handle the work well, you'll be able to handle the people well, you'll be able to adapt yourself to situations and circumstances. Added with experience, added with talents, you adapt yourself to sustain better in times because change is part of life and change is the only constant. The rest, everything is variable. So when your abilities increase, you adapt yourself well to changing situations and you grow well, you sustain well in the most odd of circumstances and happenings in life, of course, at office, at, ho at your ho home back, at all the places. And then you carve out a place for yourself, you live a life that is satisfying to you, you achieve your goals well, you become a very important team player. More than that, you become a most needed person in your system. This all comes from one basic thing, is your abilities. And you need to hone your skills day in and day out. Because the most important aspect in a human being is the ability to grow. You can grow in all the aspects of life. When Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Sherpa, they decided to conquer Everest. All planning well done, execution well started, but for some reasons they had to come back from the third base camp. They could see the tip of the Himalayas the highest point of the Himalayas, that is Everest. But the final leg, they could not conquer, they had to come back. After coming back at ground level, Edmund Hillary looked back at the Everest again, at the Himalayas, and he spoke one sentence that poured out from his heart, and that has become very famous. Edmund Hillary, he said, looking at the Everest, I'll come back again and I'll conquer you because as a mountain you cannot grow, as a human being I can. As a human being you always possess the capacity to grow. And if you don't utilize that capacity of yours to grow, you cease to be a human being. You are a student who can grow till the age of 90, 90, but till the last breath of your life. Do you believe in that? You can increase your capabilities. You can become more and more saksham till the last breath of your life. Do you believe in that? Yes. That belief is a good start for growth. That belief itself possesses the strength for growth. And that belief itself will make you grow. You have the capability and you can. One tree can start a forest. Understand this very well. And when I'm talking, I'm not going to elaborate it. One tree can start a forest. One song can start excitement. Yes or no? One smile can rejuvenate the atmosphere. Yes or no? One star in the dark skies can guide the ship in the sea. One star in the dark skies can guide a ship at sea. One person with the right attitude for growth, his action 
has more power than 99 people just taking interest. One man can make all the difference. To this extent that one man's purity can change the whole world. One man's character can uplift the whole world. This whole description converges into one thing and that is called the power of one. It is called the power of one. One thing can make all the difference at all the places. One small drop of a chemical can increase the strength of the whole material. It is called the power of one. One person's ability, the first basic core value of Saksham, develop your abilities well to meet the situations that can confront you in your path. One man's ability can save the whole company, can be instrumental in the growth of the whole company, can lay a foundation stone for the Saksham, for making everybody Saksham. One man's ability has the power. This is also a fact. A fact lived by many. Today many live by it. But to develop your full suction, full capability, full abilities that you have, because we all sitting here and thousands of professionals in the world today, we will die without not realizing our full potential. We will live our lives of 70, 80, 90 years without bringing out many latent talents and many latent energies that already we have been gifted with. Yes or no? Albert Einstein, he used only 3% of his brain. He is considered to be the most intelligent person ever upon this earth. Then what amount of brain that you and me must be using? So there are n number of abilities that we possess, n number of talents that we possess. So we are highly saksham, highly saksham. We need to bring those out by good thinking, by good exposures, by learning from experiences, by learning from obstacles, hurdles, oppositions, by learning from setbacks, failures and falls, you become more saksham. So invite difficulties. Hug your problems. Enjoy your falls. You'll become more saksham. Are you rightly getting me? Am I right or wrong? It's part of life, but you become more saksham only if you have the right kind of attitude. Till the 90s, there was a question in the top management mind. Why some people with the best of abilities, with the best of resources available, still they succeed less or sometimes fail? And why? Sometimes with lesser resources, people succeed and succeed more. So by the turn of the millennium, it was very clear in the top management mind and the top management gurus that all the resources combined do not necessarily guarantee you success. Then what guarantees your success? They said with more or less resources, the one thing that guarantees success it is your right kind of attitude towards your abilities. The first principle of Saksham we are talking of. Ability. Your attitude towards it. I can do it. I can make it happen. That attitude towards your abilities, that faith in your abilities will make you grow, will make you succeed. I have read more than 500 biographies and autobiographies of great personalities from Nelson Mandela to Abraham Lincoln to George Washington to Winston Churchill to Mahatma Gandhi to Sardar Patel to Sachin Tendulkar, everybody. They always believed that they were Saksham. They always believed that they had the abilities to overcome any difficulties. 
They always believed that they had the power, they had the ability, they had the skills to do any job in front of them. They were that confident. A very important aspect to be learned from these people, isn't it? Yes or no? They always believed that they were Saksham. Believe that you are Saksham. Irrespective of the resources and backgrounds that you have. Because Swami Vivekananda used to say, each and every soul is potentially divine. Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, who created this organization to this level, as I said, we are among the top 10 NGOs of the world. He single-handedly built, you have seen Akshardham, he single-handedly built 1300 such campuses and successfully administered it in 60 countries of the world. And that Akshardham that you see today, we are building such four huge Akshardhams. Already the construction work has started. One is in New Jersey, America at Robbinsville. It is on 265 acres of land. Second is in Abu Dhabi. Third is in Johannesburg, South Africa. And fourth is in Sydney, Australia. All projects coming up as huge as Akshardham. And you are all involved with logistics. I tell you one logistics that at present our organization is going through. Granite, marble and stone comes from Italy and Greece to Kanla in Gujarat. From there it is road transported to Pinwada in Rajasthan. Today when I'm talking to you at this present moment, more than 5,000 artisans are working on 26 different sites in Rajasthan. Again, the carved stone from Rajasthan is road transported back to Kanla, the free trade zone in Gujarat. From there, it is shipped to US. Just imagine the logistics. From Europe, it comes to Gujarat. From Gujarat, it goes to US. The logistics is mind-boggling. And more than 800 people involved in it. And then, so it's an ideal Make in India project. Raw material from Europe, all done, finished goods prepared in Gujarat and Rajasthan and shipped back to US. Make, made in India, assembled in US. And the whole Akshardham monument and 265 acres are coming up and we are going to inaugurate it in August 2021. Attitude makes a big difference. We can do it. We are Saksham. We are capable. We can make it happen. This is, that is the thought that should run in you right from morning. So this was the concept in the 90s and the turn of the millennium in the management guru's minds from Jim Collins to Stephen Covey to Anthony Robbins, everybody. And so Jeff Keller writes the book which became very famous which topped the list in the New York Times list for 64 weeks, which itself is a world record. And the title of the book is, I think, every professional, all of you, if you have a piece of paper and pen, you must definitely write it down. You must read this book. And the title of the book is, Attitude is Everything. With lesser or more resources, still you can succeed is what this book teaches and preaches you and what this book makes you believe. Attitude is everything. Abhigam. Hum Hindi mein usko bolte hain. Abhigam. Abhigam hi sarvaswa hai. Attitude makes all the difference. So developing your abilities, making yourself more saksham, your attitude will play the principal role. Apart from your skills, apart from your know-how, apart from your academics, apart from your talents, apart from your experiences, apart from your support systems, apart from your platforms, apart from your back systems. This plays a major role. Another aspect of developing your abilities is the time-consuming activities of your life which does not add on to your abilities. You must restrict it. Just about a few days back, India's top badminton coach, Gopi Chand, he was one time All, in, All England champ. He was interviewed in Hyderabad. I just got the print of that interview 
published by one of the newspapers just a couple of days back. Wonderful interview with Gopichan. And he's the person who guided two girls to the top, P.V. Sidhu and Saina Neval, to the world stage, to the Olympic stage, to international champions. He said in one of his, inter in, in the interview, to answering one of the questions, and everybody were amazed. He said, I took away the mobile from, from both the girls, P.V. Sidhu and Saina Neval, eight months before the Olympics. I didn't want them at all to focus on any aspect of life other than the Olympic gold. And both the students of Gopichan, both the girls, they respected the coach's decision, they accepted it well. They went eight months without the mobile phone. Imagine just eight minutes in your life without the mobile. Wherever we are sitting, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, eight minutes is too much. I tell you, every third minute, if you don't touch your mobile, you get discharged. <laughs> so for developing your full potential to bring out the all capabilities of yourself that, has, that you have been gifted by nature, everybody of us, you have to cut down on certain things, certain activities, certain thought processes, certain gadgets, which actually don't help you to develop your abilities. And both these girls did, and we, and we see the result. Isn't it? So again, this aspect, to develop your full abilities, cut down on certain things which don't help you. Unnecessary activities. Very important aspect. One more positive less is done, but one more negative done is not done. Did you get this? One positive step not taken is perhaps acceptable at one point of time. But one negative step taken is not acceptable because it has the power to bring down five positives down. Abilities are the most important aspect. And when you become quite capable, quite able for a job, another aspect that I want to tell you is opportunities will come knocking your door. Because there is a natural force of attraction between ability and opportunity. Are you getting me right? There is a natural force of attraction as the two magnets, they attract each other, the North and the South Pole. Abilities and opportunities will attract. If you are sound in your abilities, the first core value of Saksham, it will never remain hidden. In some or the other way, it will come out. In some or the other way, it will be known to the people in the society, in the market. And people will approach you. Work will come to you. Opportunities will knock your door. In 1996, India was touring England. I'm talking of the game of cricket. At that time, India's captain was Mohammad Azaruddin. And we had one of the star players. His name was Navjot Singh Sidhu. Today, he's an MLA in Punjab. He's a minister. For some reason, there was a brawl between Navjot Singh Sidhu and Azaruddin. Before the start of a practice match, they both, they both got, got into a brawl for some reason. There was a, like a verbal exchange between the two. And at the height of it, Navjot Singh Sidhu left the ground, left the hotel, straight to the airport, and without telling anybody, the coach or the manager, or his captain or any team player, he came back to India. Everybody in the team and the manager and the coach came to know about him reaching India after he had reached. So that was, this was a very serious breach of discipline. Isn't it? <laughs> but that paved the way for his roommate to debut. That, this incident, paved the way for his roommate 
for his debut entry into the Indian cricket team to play test matches. And this was at Lord's, the mother of all grounds, the most prestigious venue for cricket. And his little known roommate, he stepped inside Lord's because of this incident, because of the absence of Naujwa Singh Sidhu. He was definitely a part of the 11 member playing squad. Naujwa Singh Sidhu used to come three down or four down. But then, because of this, a boy, a very young boy, was part of the 22 member contingent that had gone there. And never destined to play in England because he was fifth or sixth after the 11 member team to at all come, at, if at all needed. But he had abilities. So he was selected and the debutant. He scored a century at Lords on his debut. And thereafter, nothing holding him back. He went on to become one of the most successful captains of Indian cricket team. I'm talking of Saurav Ganguly. He possessed the ability in some or the other way, nature decided to give him an opportunity. But remember one thing, the second step, when he got the opportunity, he could show his class, he could show his caliber because of one reason, and that is he possessed the ability for it. When he was fully ability able, when he was fully ability capable, when he got the opportunity, he could show his skills, he could show his class and caliber. And that, after that, we know his whole career, there was no looking back for him. So when you are able, an opportunity will definitely come from the highest level. Because again, I would like to repeat, ability and opportunity always attract each other. They will always attract each other. But when the opportunity knocks to your door, and if you are fully ready, fully able, fully capable, you will fully utilize that opportunity and that will became, become the first sound platform for you to jump at different levels of progress in your career. As simple as that. So this is the first principle and the core value of Saksham. Try to hone your abilities day in and day out. Learning never stops. We can keep learning till the last breath of our life. Recently, just about a few months back, a lady at the age of 93, she became a diploma engineer. She always had a dream to become an engineer, but she could not for some reason. But then at the age of 90, she felt that let's go for engineering. She didn't want to do a job of engineering, but it was a dream to become an engineer. For some reason, she could, she could not, in her young days, she had a wonderful career in the com commerce field. But that small dream, she fulfilled at the age of 93. So you can always develop your abilities, your capabilities, your skills, till the last breath of your life. First part is that. Second part is, if you are quite able, change is a part of life is the only constant. Let me tell one more word to change beyond these two words, is change is routine. Routinely it will come. Adaptability is a very important aspect. Recently Harvard University has put forward a definition for intelligence, and the definition is, adaptability to change is intelligence. Highest level of intelligence is your adaptability to change. A change comes in your life. A change comes in your career. How quick you can adapt yourself to it. That makes you intelligent. Otherwise, if you cannot adapt to change, all your talents, skills, intelligence, know-how, knowledge, experience, all, all things don't count. You have to change. With the change, adapt yourself. You might have always heard that saints used to do 
kathas on Ramayana and Mahabharata and everything. We do. But we change with the times as well. Now we are going to the professional field to talk to the professionals as well. So you change with the times because at the end of the day, it's our duty, a moral duty, to imbibe more and more values and virtues in the lives of people. We used to do it by parents and kathas. We continue it. We also now do it with professional talks. As simple as that. So adaptability to change is intelligence. This is a Harvard University definition. How many of you have read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Just raise your hands. About three of you. I think more of you, you must as a professional. I'm surprised why you have not read till day. It's like a 20, 25 year old book. He personally met more than 3,000 successful people upon this earth, successful not just as a businessman, but in all walks of life. As successful as a husband, as a wife, as a brother, as a sister, as a neighbor, as a friend. All roles to be played by a person. He personally interviewed them, and he comes to a conclusion that these seven habits I found common in these people, and the first habit common that he found in these people was proactive. This is Hindi mein bolte pratikul paristiti mein sanukul pratibhav. This is called adaptability. Pratikul paristiti mein sanukul pratibhav. That is in the circumstances that or situations that are not comfortable that you are not comfortable with them you produce out a response that is comfortable to your team to the circumstances to the happenings proactive is the word first habit that they had proactivity means adaptability in the negative happenings, you give a positive response that is called proactive. And that is the best adaptability. Because that response comes out of certain core values that you have decided to live with in your life. One small example, that whoever even gives me a cuss word, throws it at me, I will always respond it with a smile. For example, if you have decided this in your life. I will never say a cuss word, but anybody throwing it at me, I will respond it with a good smile. Now, this is called proactivity. This is a good adaptability. From that to many things. Adaptability with situations, with circumstances. Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, he was once in New York, and the room in which he was sitting was quite small, because the construction was of the 70s. And somebody told him the room is very small. Pramukh Swami Maharaj responded, small rooms are good. Less power is utilized. Just one week after that, he was in Toronto, where it was quite spacious, lately built. And the same person said, Swamiji, such big rooms are quite good. Pramukh Swami said, yes, big rooms are quite good. More people can be incorporated in. More people can sit. Small room is also good. Big room is also good. This is called adaptability. Your attitude towards looking at it. Small room, less power used. Big room, fine. More people can walk in, come in, sit in. Pramukh Swami Maharaj had this adaptability. And that is why we are, as an organization, we have grown. Once he wrote a letter, Pramukh Swami Maharaj wrote a letter to a senior saint, transferring him from one temple to another temple for some other activity. He had kept the letter with him. At that time, two of our elder saints who would look after the saints' activity, their uh, portfolios, the type of the services they are to be involved in, the place that they stay, their transfers and everything, two of our elder saints. They came in and they suggested Pramukh Sahib Maharaj that for this senior saint, we have thought for this, temp this temple, this city, and this activity. Pramukh Swami Maharaj found it quite good. He immediately brought out that letter, which he himself had written, and he tore it off. And our two elder saints, administrators, he would say, Swami, why did you do this? What is this? He said, for the same saint, I had thought something else, but I found yours quite better. This is called adaptability with your team. 
with your subordinates, with your colleagues. Of course, both the elders said, Swamiji, your thought would be much better than us. He, he said, no, I found your better. When you are sitting in a meeting, you have proposed your part of the idea as well. And thereafter, a one and a half to two hour discussion, if wholeheartedly you can accept a better thought from one of your team members and express yourself, okay, yours is quite better than me. This is the ultimate of adaptability. Ultimate of adaptability. And then only you can make a good team. Good teams and good team players are not necessarily always good professionals or highly skilled people. They need to be good human beings. Talents and skills are part of small part, I would say residue part of good human beings. It will come out. So, this is the adaptability that we find in such great personalities who lead huge organizations. You learn it from nature as well. You minor, minutely observe the flora and fauna around you. You minor, minutely very observe the lower levels of the animal kingdom, small animals. Their adaptability capacity is very high. They are highly saksham when it comes to adaptability. How many of you have seen sunflowers on the tree, on the plant? Sunflower plants, just raise your hands full. Quite many of you. You know sunflower, it chases the sun. From the morning rise to the evening set. It always moves looking towards the sun. In short, it chases the light. What happens on cloudy days? What happens on rainy days when there is no sun or lesser sun? Or what happens at dark? Have you seen the sunflowers during the dark or when there is less sun or that is cloudy or rainy? In which position they are? Tell me if somebody has seen. Looking down, looking, down the looking down towards the earth. Looking, okay, everybody is making this kind of symbol, isn't it? Action. You are wrong. Look at it again. When there is lesser sun, no cloud, no rain, or the dark, sunflowers will face each other, not look towards the ground. Dekhna. You know why? When the two sunflowers, they face each other, scientists for years have experimented on this, they exchange each other's energy. So that every sunflower leaves for tomorrow morning's sunrise. A very good example from nature when it comes to adaptability. They exchange energies. A typical sunflower has, for example, sunflower A has lesser energy to pass the whole night. Then sunflower B will give some part of his energy. They exchange energies. That is light that they have stored during the day from the sun. So when the times are not good, when situations don't favor you, when there are some oppositions that you can less handle, a good adaptability among team members will make everybody survive for the next sunrise, for the next good opportunity. So making yourself Saksham part two, that is adaptable, is the most important virtue that you can develop to in the present times to carry your work forward, to carry your life forward. Most important aspect. Because people who change after the change will survive. People who don't even change even after the change will die. But, 
people who change with the change will prosper but one step ahead people who change before the change will lead got it people who change before the change will lead that is adaptability to change you foresee the change coming the moment you become capable saksham of foreseeing a change in your profession or life and you change yourself before the change comes to you to adapt yourself to the new change you will lead if not to that level if you foresee the change and even change with the change not before the change but with the change even then you will sustain and prosper but if you are procrastinate enough lazy enough to change yourself after the change at least you will survive because you have accepted change and drastic thing is if you don't change even after the change you will die and many of them have died many companies have died a big case of nokia very popular on the social media and you might have learned it well so i'm not elaborating it refused to accept the android os and it died now it is coming back with the android platform you have to change adaptability to change is intelligence you know one good adaptability pramukh swami maharaj wanted to build a mandir in london to showcase hindu tradition indian culture and everything to the people in the west today that mandir stands in nisdan 1995 we inaugurated it and readers digest has written for that mandir that it is the eighth wonder of the world so far it is for three times in the guinness book of world records the baps swaminarayan mandir in london in nisdan you can see on our website baps.org masterpiece 28000 carved pieces were sent from india again the stone marble everything came from europe shipped to uh, shipped to india road transported to rajasthan back and sent to london this i am talking of the year 92 93 94 94 about 25 years back imagine the logistics then and all successfully done not a single piece out of this 28000 cowed ones was damaged now i'm giving you a good target of logistics we achieved the sigma 6 at that time sigma 6 did not exist at that time we taught what is sigma 6 not a single piece of 28000 cowed pieces from the smallest which was half an inch to the largest which was 50 by 50 feet 28000 cowed pieces pieces from rajasthan to kandla these pieces were road transported and then on in containers sent to london and then they were stuck to build a whole monument and we completed the whole project in 26 months now see the adaptability i'm going to come to that point now Pramukh Swami Maharaj said, "We want to build a full-fledged gym in the campus of the mandir." Now, this was altogether out of everybody's mind. Why a gym? I'm talking of the concept of Pramukh Swami Maharaj 25 years back. At that time, his age was 75. A 75-year-old Indian sadhu. talking of a full fledged gym in the mandir campus and pramukh sai maharaj was asked by a trustees swami ji why a gym we need a good good auditorium for happenings pramukh sai maharaj said today's youth if they will come for gym in the, at this place some day they will climb the stairs and go for darshan and go in the aarti to bring them to the mandir let's have a gym as well and today we found after 25 years highly 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 successful idea because the newcomers would see the to have a full fledged gym in the year 1995 even in london it was something new the gym concept in india started in the last 10 15 years to have 
full-fledged gyms and each and every nook and corner of the city and people really aware of it and utilizing it. It all started in the last decade. I'm talking of 25 years back. At that time, probably there was not a gym of this class in the whole city of London. And we did it in Mandir campus. And its size, you are sitting in this hall today, that campus of ours in London, residing this gym, that's just the gym area is five times this hall. In the center of London, Pramukh Swami Maharaj devoted so much space to gym. And they could even play cricket, indoor cricket inside. <laughs> Imagine such five, six halls. But that would attract all the Indian youths to that place. And our youth strength grew from a few tens to thousands today, thanks to big concept of this. See, adaptability to change. A 75-year-old Indian saint, just fifth standard pass, Pramukh Swami Maharaj, he could think of a gym in a mandir. Imagine this. Because he could adapt himself to the new generation. How to be with them? What do they like? What can I give them so that I can give them a touch of spirituality later on? What is the first step to bring them close? And he put a gym in between them and the mandir. And we got results, beautiful results. Our youth conventions in London today, it's like 2,000, 3,000 youths. Every summer we have it. This is called adaptability with the situation, with the norms, with the times, with the time, people of those times, with the generations of those times, and then you grow. We grew in London because of this concept, especially in the, among the, amongst the youth. So adaptability to change is intelligence, and your good adaptability for change can bring you good results. How many of you have seen the video of the U.S. Marines being trained? None of you, I think, you must download it from somewhere and show it. Worth the video to be shown on this Saksham platform today. The U.S. Marines being trained. The amount of adaptability that they are taught. Unimaginable. For a week, they are from a chopper landed in the midst of a dense forest. Only one thing they are given in their hand is a small knife. No food, no water, no second piece of cloth. Now survive for one week. He has to survive there. He has to search water. He has to search food. He has to climb the tops of the trees to escape from animals. He has to survive for one week. This is the last exercise that he has to pass to become a U.S. Marine. And no doubt, then only they can find enemies in enemy countries. And they did it. They're highly capable people. Skill, capabilities, adaptabilities, unbelievable. They are taught that without food or water, you should be able to give your utmost capabilities and best working performance after 72 hours. 72 hours without water or food, still you should be capable of standing and do your work right. They are trained to that level. They can survive in any temperatures. They are made to survive from minus 40 to plus 40. They can wither anything. Adaptability. Human mind, human body is capable. I just described a couple of it. You will, when you will see the video, I think it's just 7 or 8 minutes, but worth it. How the US Marines are made to develop their abilities and how they are taught to adapt to the worst circumstances. They are taken to the deserts of the Middle East for training, where the temperatures are 50 degrees. And they have to survive there as well, stay there as well. They are also taken in the north of Canada there, when there is ice, where there is minus 30, to survive there as well. 
So adaptability, capacity of a human being is beyond our imagination. That's what I want to tell. Human body, Bhagwan Swami Narayan has said in one of his scriptures that human body and human mind is highly capable of adaptability. Highly capable. So when you are highly capable of adaptability, you will sustain the final core value of your Saksham Summit. First is ability, second is adaptability, and third is sustainability. You will sustain with a good amount of abilities developed in your profession and life, good amount of adaptability, and you will sustain in the worst of circumstances. Let me put forward today in this Saksham Summit a very formidable statement, very authentic statement, and a very concrete one in this world, there is no situation that a human mind cannot handle. We have the sustaining capacity. Only thing we need to look at the situation in that way. There was a great tennis player, a female tennis player by the name of Martina Navratilova in the 80s and the 90s. Always the title clash between her and Chris Everett Lloyd. Just a few years back, she was still playing tennis in the doubles or the mixed doubles. Till the age, she was like 43, 44. Yeah. When her age was like 43, 44. An interviewer once asked her that you can still play tennis at the age of 43? Because tennis is a very demanding sport. You still play tennis at 43, and that too at international level, professional circuit. At 43, the answer she gave, excellent. She said, sir, you and me and the audience knows that I'm 43. The ball doesn't know that I'm 43. <laughs> the ball that I'm hitting, the ball doesn't know I'm 43. I'm only concerned if the ball knows I'm 43. <laughs> Rest if all knows and the ball doesn't know, it's fine, I can go on. You have the sustaining capacity if you keep this attitude. She sustained at 43. To be a professional player in international circuits in tennis at 43 is not an ordinary thing. Why did she sustain? With this attitude. The ball is ball. I am I. Why would I allow it to hover over my mind? The ball doesn't know I'm 43. And until the ball doesn't know, it's fine, I can carry on. A fine answer, it carries many meanings. When Sachin Tendulkar completed 20 years of international cricket, it's great sustainability. 20 years of performance at the international level, in any sport is a very big thing in itself because you need tremendous physical fitness, you need strong mental balance, you need a good emotional equilibrium. Only then you can sustain at the top for 20 years and that to constantly giving a good performance. The discipline, the dedication wanted for it, unimaginable. Any sport, 20 years of international performance is a very big achievement in itself. Times of India carried out a very special supplement for him, interviewing him, and Sachin was asked, Sir, what is the secret of your success of this level of performance at the highest level for 20 years? And Sachin gave a very wonderful answer. Two things, he said. First, at 6 in the morning, I'm at the nets. Discipline. Discipline is the principal factor of sustainability. At six, I'm at the nets. First, I face 500 deliveries. Only then, anything else. And the interviewer goes, Sir, if you have scored a century or double century on the previous day, that means you are in a good nick, in a good form, in a good touch. 
Sachin goes, even if I have done a double century on the previous day, I'm still not out at, that is, even when I'm still at the crease. Next day morning, six, I'm at the nets. Sunil Gavaskar, when he was asked the secret of his success, again a great batsman, the first batsman to complete 10,000 runs in test cricket. He was asked, what is the secret of his success? At that time, the 3D imaging was very popular, so he said 3D. And then he said, what, does you, what do you mean by 3D? He says, discipline, dedication, and determination. This is sustainability. Your discipline, your dedication, and your determination will sustain you for long years in your field. Why does the man at the top today in the country, working 18 hours a day at the age of 69, how can he? And he did not fall sick for even one minute in the last five years. He did not fall sick for even one minute in five years at the age of 69. And every day you would read in the newspapers, he's appearing somewhere in India. What a traveling. And everywhere he goes, he's a responsible person. He's constantly under the glare of cameras. Whatever he speaks, it carries too much weightage. Anybody, any head of the state I'm talking. Because it's a very responsible position. One word wrong out of his mouth can create ripples. Such a responsible thing. And he has not made a public mistake in five years. Why? 3D. Discipline. Dedication and determination. This is how you sustain. This is how you carry on. Sachin Tendulkar said the second thing. He said, I not only play cricket, I drink cricket, I eat cricket, I sleep cricket, I dream cricket, I wake up cricket, I walk cricket, I talk cricket. It's cricket, cricket, cricket 24-7. So a small part of your mind, if it is constantly engaged and focused, other part of the mind, you can adapt to different situations. Like you are at a party, enjoy the party. You are with your elders and parents, find a good time sitting with them. All these things happen. One small part of your brain should be constantly focused on what you want to be in life. Anywhere, anytime. That will make you a good sustenance element. One small part of the brain should be absolutely dedicated to, you, to your goals, all the times. Even when you are at a party and enjoying, one small part of the brain should be constantly aware that what my goal is. Even when you are watching a T20 international final, World Cup final, one small part of the brain should be engaged in, my job is actually to become the CEO here. Fine, okay. Watch the match. After 10 minutes, fine, he's batting well. My job is CEO. <laughs> After 10 minutes, oh my God, he's a wonderful ball. He uprooted the middle stem. Okay, but I want to be a CEO. <laughs> Small part of the brain, constantly engaged and focused towards your ultimate goal and achievement that you want in your life, that will become the principal source of energy for your sustenance. These are some of the very crucial, typical, and underlying less in current Touch points that I'm giving you. So this is how people have survived. Great people have, this people, I named this, they've gone all through the thicks and things of life. I talked of Martina Navratilo, I talked of Sachin Tendulkar, anybody. They've gone through different phases in life, like everybody of us go. But 3D is the sustenance. And the practical part of 3D is a small part of your brain constantly focused. We know the superstar Amitabh Bachchan, he passed through a very tough phase in the late 80s and early 90s. Very tough phase of his life. How did he sustain? 3D. Simple. Discipline, dedication and determination. 3D survives you. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mind. And you will do it. When we wanted to build a temple in London, we had purchased the land in a suburb called Harrow in London. And the neighborhood, they put a case in the court against us that these people would 
have all their festivals going on and drum beating and everything till late night, till midnight, and that would disturb our peace, our privacy. And say, so they put up a case in the court. We also engaged a good lawyer. They had a lawyer from that side. One of the legal process in the West is that you collect signature. It's called a signature campaign. The neighborhood that is a part of this whole story, both the parties, they go out house to house, person to person, make them explain the, like, explain them, make them understand the whole, their part of the story. And that gives the freedom to the neighbor, anybody in the neighborhood to sign out either of the two parties. They collected more signatures than us. We were foreigners there. So the court decided to give the judgment in their favor. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was here in Gujarat. He got a call from our chairman of trustees that Swamiji, we have lost the case and we will not be able to build there. Now this was a severe setback, a heartbreaking news. How did Pramukh Sahib respond? See such great personalities, great doers, great performers, extraordinary people upon this earth. How do they respond to such setbacks, such failures, such falls in life? Pramukh Sahib's first words. We accept God's wish. See, he stabilized himself. Second thing was important to sustenance. He said, we have put in all our resources and all our know-hows. Now, results, final, whatever, we accept it. This is a very important thought for sustenance. You don't repent if you have put all your resources for the success. You will repent only if you have not put all your resources that were available to you for the success and then you failed. Then you will repent. So the second thought for good sustenance is, did I put all my resources that were available to me for the success of this work? Fine, if you have done it, then don't repent the failure. That is a good aspect for sustenance. That you don't repent failures. And you don't repent failures only if you have put all your energies into it. Third thing Pramukh Sami Maharaj said, that we have decided to build a temple there. We will build it, start searching for another land. This is called sustenance. When we have decided to do something, we will make it happen at any cost. If one door is closed, we'll open the next door. And if there is no door, we will make a door. That is sustenance. That spirit, that spirit is sustenance. So the spirit should be this. If the door is closed, I will search for another door. If there is no another door, I will create a door in the wall, but I will make things happen. That spirit, that hope and confidence is sustenance. Hope and confidence is your sustenance. For this spirit, you have to constantly master your inner dialogue. I would again suggest a very good book for you. The title of the book is Still Power. That is sustenance. The power to still, S-T-I-L-L, S-T-I-L-L, -L, still power. One word. Beautiful book. The author is Gareth Kramer. Gareth Kramer, K-R-A-M-M-E-R. -E still power. That is sustenance. How to develop your still power? Develop your sustenance capability. In this, he says, your performance and your sustenance is restricted by the type of the inner dialogue that you have with your own self. Will I be able to do it? Is it my job? This is out of my routine. I don't know whether I'll be able to perform or not. What if I don't do it? All the inner dialogues that happen within you when you are entrusted with a responsibility or given a job decides your sustenance capacity, your still power. He's a sports psychologist, so he psychologically treats sports persons. But that is applicable to life and any profession, not just sports. It is applicable to all professions. In this book, at the end, he gives a wonderful formula. I would definitely suggest all of you write this formula. 
And if you don't take anything else from this talk, take this formula with you. He gives this formula, performance. Write it down. Performance. Is equal to capabilities minus internal interference. Performance is equal to capabilities minus internal interference. That is, if you develop the highest spirit, I can make it happen. Sustained. You will sustain. Performance is equal to capabilities minus your internal interference. He uses another good phrase in this book. I loved this book. I read it in the late 90s. One of the good 25 books that I've read. It stands among the top 25 that I ever read. One of the good phrases that he uses in this book and teaches us is again, I would suggest you write it. Part of it because I love it very much. You have to write it. <laughs> and pa more part of it because you will also enjoy and you will also, it's a good helpful to you. Another good phrase that he writes in this book is, stop yourself, write it down. Stop yourself from stopping yourself. Stop yourself from stopping yourself. I want everybody of you to repeat with me. Stop yourself, stop yourself. From, from stopping yourself. Stop yourself. Now again repeat with me. I will, I will. Stop, myself stop myself from, from stopping, stopping myself. You got it? You will enjoy this phrase. Stop. I will stop myself from stopping, stopping myself. You, your inner dialogue, your own thought process are the biggest hurdle for you to perform in the worst of times and sustain yourself. Nobody else. No other factor. As simple as that. And the last thing that I would end my talk with, a very good story that I like. Once a good uh, middle-aged person must be in his mid-40s. On a fine Saturday evening, when he was off from his work, he decided to go and watch a football match in his neighborhood. So he just walked inside. It was an off day, weekend. And he went and took his seat. Besides him was a very young 12-year-old boy, enthusiastic and supporting a team with colors and flags and everything. And he just looked at him. And he said, uh, my little boy, if you don't mind, can you give me the score? Because he was halfway the match. And the boy said, this is my team and the other team and they are leading us 3-0. And he said, the way he was talking, he was not at all discouraged. And the news that he is giving to me, that they are leading us 3-0, was all with enthusiasm. They are leading us 3-0. This is my team, they are their team. Again, he was started flagging and this and that. And the middle-aged person, he got, there is something energetic. And he said that to the little boy after a couple of minutes, aren't you discouraged that it's almost half time and you are trailing 3-0? Aren't you discouraged? And the little boy said, sir, I have hope, I have confidence that our team and our managers, they will perform well. And we will win, we will overcome the situation. He said, why? And the little boy said, sir, why are you asking me why? Still there is half time to go for the final whistle. Why are you challenging me before the final whistle has blown? <laughs> Beautiful teaching. Don't decide the outcome of your life before the final whistle has blown. You stand all chances to win. <laughs> You stand all chances to overcome any situation and win till you don't accept the final whistle. 
He, the little boy said, sir, the, the final vision is yet to go. And as the happening happened, the match ended with 5-4 in the boy's favor. And they won the match. The gentleman, he says, when I was leaving the stadium, my seat, the little boy looked at me, smiled, waved his hand and said, hi, uncle, bye. That means he indirectly told, see, how it came out. But that man writes, the author is unknown of this story. He writes back that at night when I was going to bed, the one question that was with that smile and face of that 12-year-old little boy in my memory was, Sir, why would I accept the outcome when still the referee is yet to blow the final whistle? He said this was a very big learning for me today. And the second thing the author writes at the end of this story is again a beautiful sentence. I would like you to write this. And the sentence is, see, good sentence for sustainability, yeah? good phrase rather for sustainability. Half time, this is from a soccer match. Right, half time is not full time. You got it? Half time is not full time. Don't accept the results at half time. Anything can change in the second half. Sustain yourself. If you sustain yourself, the second half is yours. If you accept the results of the final outcome in the half time, you are lost, you are gone. Sustenance capability is more sustained with this thought process, with this spirit, that half time is not full time. And anything can happen any situation can be overcome. You can sustain yourself till the referee has not blown the final whistle. We all sitting here. We are at half time. When you have a good sustenance capacity, the referee is still yet to blow the whistle. So fine. Carry on. As simple as that. When the, you make a spider fall from a net or a wall, what does it do? And you make it fall again, what does it do? Sustenance capability you learn from a spider. Tremendous sustained capability. To that extent that it will sit in its web hours and hours and hours to wait for a prey. Sustenance. So we are inspired with that. So your Saksham Summit is these three things. I think I touched upon the principles and core values right. Ad ability, adaptability, and sustainability is with this thought processes, with this actions, with this spirit. My all prayers for all of you. Thank you very much for calling me here. Have a great day and time and life ahead. My all prayers for all of you. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions to be, uh, as what I had requested, if there's anybody who has got any questions for Swamiji, uh, to probably enlighten himself further up? Can I have the paper? I'll just read it out. She has a question on ability. What if your boss tries to suppress your ability, <laughs> which is very common in the corporate world? No, certainly not. <laughs> there she says, certainly not. Uh, and uh, ability and opportunity is related. But usually Indian people say, we need to search opportunity. Do you believe in it, uh, Swamiji? Meaning, uh, the Indian people would always say that we need to search for an opportunity. It does not come on your way, right? Is that what you mean, right? Okay. Definitely the first question is like if your abilities are suppressed by your top colleague or your boss, 
is always that across the table you can sit and discuss things this is the first step second thing whatever given to you as a job work or a project you excel it to that level that your report speaks of your abilities and it makes your boss rethink about you that is the second thing third thing is your approach with people around you the way you deal with people and work will definitely show your abilities and capabilities as i said put forward a sentence in my talk that no ability of yours will get will go hidden but after all this after all this still the boss is pressed upon or your boss is bent upon suppressing your abilities now capital words change the boss <laughs> and when you are here in the 21st century and when you are in a highly competitive corporate world definitely i do believe everybody of us do accept that you have to search for opportunities the second part of the question yes yeah, search for you have to search for opportunities you have to go through the print media electronic media on jobs.com or you know nokri.com or whatever and you have to search for opportunities of course no doubt about it but i tell you at one place when you have shown your abilities there are chances more chances that and definite chances that opportunities will come to you because once you are known searching for opportunities is during the initial stage of your work career when somewhere after 2 5 7 years down the line when you have shown your abil abilities adaptabilities capabilities sustainabilities then in the market with other people in the same business in the same sphere will come to know that there is a person there is an employee in that company who has that capability and whenever they they have a place for you space for you they will contact you that has happened that can you join us definitely you have a good job and a good pay but can you join us we'll give you a more better pay and a more respectable position here that is the two words they use huh? dangerous in corporate world sure. give you a better pay and better profile better profile the profile is the same <laughs> names change yes Name, designations designation change. change yeah designations change yes. in the 90s we used to tell the uh, you know somebody said somebody attending guests or welcoming guests at the reception counter in a hotel or whatever we used to call it receptionist now they have upgraded the name not the work work profile. so they are called front desk managers <laughs> basically the receptionist uh, the receptionist yes in the 80s we call somebody as a cleaner who used to clean yes now in the 90s they are called housekeeping housekeeping till the year 2010 yeah. after 2000 they again changed the word in house managers in house managers okay everybody has to be made a manager you see yes elevated yeah elevated for any post now these two words are very common executive and managers from the day one even the junior most person can be given a good visiting card and below his name can be written an executive and then his profile so this is just out of the track but i'm joking in the way that this corporate people can make anything happen when it comes to just use of words use of words yeah at the end of the profile day, and the work remains the same yes at the end of the day they'll make the person work the way they want <laughs> <laughs> yes so i mean to say is that uh, again yes in one line that in the initial stages of your work career you have to go and search for opportunities but once when you have shown your caliber and class definitely opportunities good opportunities will come to you that has happened with many professionals i think am i right and some of the professionals sitting here yeah. yeah you will see this in the market or you must have seen this happening with your friend or some colleague yeah fine yeah very simple question uh, probably what is the meaning of a successful person according to you not according to me i'll give you a very generalized and accepted definition of success and which is really the right definition of success the biggest problem with this generation the millennials all the working people today okay that we have misconceptualized three words growth progress and success mm -hmm. growth is different progress is different and success is different for example if you increase the output or the turnover of your company doesn't make you successful you have done a good growth okay any materialistic better happening 
Now take these words. Any materialistic better happening at your workplace or personal life is your growth. That growth, if it is aided by and added by, these two words, aided by and added by principles and ethics, it becomes progress. Okay. That progress, if it is aided by and added by humanity, morality and spirituality, it becomes success. So, growth and progress does not necessarily bring you happiness and peace. Success is the only word that contains in itself all the growth, all the progress, plus peace and happiness. If with all the growth and all the progress, you are running, for example, a 500 crore company, self-developed, it is good growth, good progress. But if on a personal level, at your workplace and your personal life, you are not enjoying peace and happiness, you are not successful. So this is the three words, growth, progress and success. It's a sheer coincidence that probably about 25 years back, we started with a very small value and a volume. You can call it as a company which probably touched one crore during the year 19 uh, or, or early 2000. And today, by the end of this year, we would be reaching 500 crores. <laughs> Starting from a very small, humble office of 10 square meters to about a total of 2,000 square meters today. That is what, in all aspects, what Swamiji said, is materialistic progress, or rather materialistic enhancement in your uh, corporate world, and that was growth. Adding people from one to five to 300 today, and feeding those 300 families with an attrition ratio of not more than 3% in last 15 years, and seeing each and every individual as a happy individual would probably fall into the definition of progress. And now, with this growth and with this progress, when we are on to touching the lives of those underprivileged, untrodden, and the poor people out of the wealth what we are earning would probably be defined as the ultimate success of what we are doing. Definitely. <laughs> any, any other question? Super, you had a question. Yeah. Okay, there's one more here. In reference to keeping separate, uh, self separate from the problem, am I right? As practically can person, the karta, can be a spectator, drishtata, drishta. Uh, in reference to keeping self separate from the problem, meaning detached from the problem, can practically the person who is the karta be a spectator? Yes, definitely. That is what is taught by Bhagwan Sri Krishna in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. First, when the problem approaches you, first don't allow the problem to hover over your mind. The choice is yours. The birds can move hover over your mind or your head, but then whether to allow it to build a nest in your hair is your choice. Okay. So don't allow the problems to build a nest in your mind, to stay there. First look at the problem from a distance, separate yourself from the problem, that okay, this problem stands there. Only then you'll be able to view it from all angles to find a good solution for it. Don't never say, I have a problem. Never ever keep that attitude, I have a problem. Always keep the attitude that I'm seeing a problem. Then you see it from north, south, east, west, up, down, everywhere, and find a solution to it. 
basically live in a detached world and only get attached when you are supposed to, probably. The best management gurus of the world today, Jim Collins, Stephen Covey, they use a very beautiful word to teach the corporates. They teach the word detached attachment. Detached attachment. From morning 9 to 6, fully attach yourself with work. Before 9 a.m. and after 6 p.m., detach yourself. You don't know whether Sarjak exists upon this earth or not. <laughs> after 6 p.m., make your mindset that. <laughs> this is called detached attachment. I, I many times when I talk to corporates, I tell them that after 6 p.m., don't carry your office in your mind back home. And the same thing tomorrow morning, don't carry your home in your heart at 9 a.m. at office. This is called detached attachment. So make sure you, when you're all in the office, get detached from home. At 9 a.m., of course. Yes. That is what I can tell you. <laughs> as far as detachment from office, I leave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but only then, look, that develops your complete personality. Yes, yes, sir. that's true, that's true. In fact, uh, I've been a very great promoter of this philosophy of attachment. I tell you, the, the parliament in France, they've already passed the bill. And the bill gives a constitutional right to each and every French citizen. I'm using the word constitutional right. To each and every French official. And the exact word is the right to reject work after 6 p.m. Wow. That's a good It's word. a constitutional right. But it is in France only, mind you. <laughs> Huh. Not in India. <laughs> it will propagate in all the parts of the world. Second thing I tell you, yeah. the government of New Zealand, they're mulling, and they have started an experiment in a few corporates at government places. Four day week. Four day week. Yes. Okay. And New Zealand probably would pass the bill by this June. Four day week. Potential will remain the same. Work output remains the same. As it is proved, the Germans are the people who work the least among all the other top 25 countries in the total whole week. Mm -hmm. Okay. If in the week somebody has 60 hours, somebody has 55, somebody has 50, the Germans work less than 40. Oh. And still they are the most productive as they define it because of this detached attachment theory. My German friends, your target is doubled from next year. Sorry? I see no problem there. That's the spirit. Yeah, the gentleman, yeah. Who said that? Right. That's great. That's good spirit. The next question is how to control anger. Yeah. I'll give you a practical tip. I'll not talk theory. I always talk practical. Okay. When you get angry, first thing. Practical, very practical. Leave the place. Leave that scenario, leave that scene, leave the place physically. Run out of the room. Run out of the office. First practical thing to control anger. Leave the place. Second thing. Never use your hands or still your hands when you are in anger. That you don't slap anybody. So the word is, you steal your angry. hands and shut your mouth. Okay. The SS theory to control anger. Steal your hands and shut your mouth when you are angry. That is the second practical thing. So you don't speak out something which you repent later. That's true. In that gust of anger. Yes. That is the second practical tip. And the third thing, while you have, while you have shut your mouth, you have left the place, count hundred in your mind. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so by the time you finish hundred, the para, the the pressure is the down. Pressure, the mercury goes down. Mercury goes down. Yeah, that is taught in the West. We teach that in whichever form of God that you believe in, chant his hundred names and only then open your mouth. That will give you more peace and tranquility and subside the anger. So three things: leave the place, the SS theory, still your limbs, limbs. and shut your mouth, mouth and count or chant the holy name hundred times. Great. The mercury will go down. I'm talking very practical. Make sure all of you, when you leave your home, do this exercise and come to the office. 
Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yes. So leave your anger at home. While on your way to the office, chant whatever good names you want for a hundred or thousand times. Still your hands and shut your mouth while you are in the trains or the traveling uh, logistics. And leave your home immediately to the office, for the office. Thank you. Uh, uh, one more question. Uh, so the SS theory applies here as well, Sarjak Saksham. Sarjak Saksham, yes, to make yourself and Sarjak Saksham. What is your definition of spirituality? My definition of spirituality, and of course, not just, it's not my individual thought, but then as well prescribed by the great seers and seekers of India since ages, and in all the good spiritual scriptures, like Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavat, all those good scriptures, scriptures, and the experience and the wisdom of the great saints of India, like Pramukh Sai Maharaj or today our Guru Man Sai Maharaj. Step one of spirituality is that you become a very good human being. Step two of spirituality is all your engagements, your work, your relationships should be ethically right. Third step of spirituality, you should have absolute faith, belief in the existence and the all doership of God to keep yourself stable under all circumstances of your life and enjoy the ultimate bliss of life. Because again, I tell you, we have misconceptualized these four words. We don't know the clear definition of these four words. The four words are fun, joy, happiness, and bliss. These are four different things. Fun, joy, happiness, and bliss. These are four different things. I just exemplify in one line to differentiate this four so you have the very clear definition and understanding of it. You wanted to drive your car at 100 miles per hour, you got to drive it, and that is called fun. You got a freeway without any traffic, and you could drive it because it was your dream to drive at 100 miles per hour on a Mumbai Pune Expressway, and you got to drive it. That is fun. And you wanted to drive a limo or a Merc, you drove it. But then you want to own that car, that Mercedes. You could own it on your own. That is called joy in life. Because you could own it. Not only drive it, you could own it. That car with all happenings, pluses and minuses in your life, still you can maintain that car throughout your life with that status. is called happiness. Okay. And that car, if it goes away halfway from your life because your financial stumblings, or you crash that car, you are not able to regain that status car again in your life. Still, if you can clearly think in your mind that this car wasn't with me when I was born, and I would not carry it with me after my death, well, it was somewhere in the middle that I got it, and I lost it, it's okay, it's fine, and you remain stable, that is called bliss. bliss. That's true. These are four different things. <laughs> when you have clearly understood the bliss of life, that he is practically experiencing spirituality. Great. We all experience this spirituality in some manner or the other in our life on a daily routine. It is only that we are so busy in our daily routine that we do not recognize these four uh, sections of spirituality, be it fun, joy, uh, uh, what happiness, else? And happiness and blissfulness. So at every stage, every day, every moment, we experience this. But henceforth, I would only request that having heard these good words of wisdom and these kind words, introspect into yourself. Look at yourself, what you are, where you are. How can you become better than what you are in terms of being a good citizen? How can you be helpful to somebody? How can you be supportive to anybody? And how can you add value to somebody else's life I think that should be the motive, and that probably will make the world a very good world, a better world to live in, and a world full of happiness, joy, and the ultimate, that bliss which you will get. Thank you. Thank you very much, Swamiji. But before we would end, I would like to give you a memento. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. 
that just one line, one good uh, thought for you, yeah. that we all aspire to become smart professionals, and we must. But the addition to that, you should always aspire to become a good combination of a smart professional and a great human being. If you are a smart professional and not a good human being, you will be a loser in life. If you are a combination of both, that is a smart professional and a good human being, you will be a winner in life. Be a winner in life, not a loser. So this is the final telling to you, aspire to become a smart professional and a great human being. Right. You should have the combination of these two in your life. So thank be, you very much, everybody.